In the uh, last hour, we've been talking, asking the question, uh, could Beto O'Rourke be the, the uh, dark horse candidate, uh, the, the, the guy who kind of comes out of nowhere to become the next president of the United States? Now, we've got some great candidates, you know, presumed candidates already. Um, but there is, you know, some word that Hillary Clinton is thinking about getting back into the race. Bernie's acting like he's running, uh, as are Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker. Uh, Joe Biden uh, apparently is uh, seriously considering it. Um, but Beto O'Rourke, I mean, you know, he's, he's actually older than John Kennedy was when he became president. Uh, he's, he's served four years in Congress. There's a lot going on. Uh, we talked about the, the changing face of climate change. We're seeing this now in the forest fires that are burning down California, while Trump has troops cooling their heels down on the Mexican border for his pre-election uh, photo op. Uh, we're going to get to my appearance on Fox News yesterday, which was entertaining. But right now on the line with us is our old buddy, Wendell Potter. Wendell Potter is a former health insurance expert or executive. He's the, uh, he is now an expert on it. He is the author of Deadly Spin and Nation on the Take, his two books. His latest project is tarbell.org, uh, an organization that, that uh, a website that exam and an organization that examines the impact of money in politics on millions of Americans. His, his personal website is wendellpotter.com, and you can tweet him at Wendell Pot, P-O-T-T. -T. Wendell, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom, glad to be back. Thank, yeah, thank you for joining us. So uh, here we have this uh, bizarre story that I believe it was Aetna uh, had a, a doctor who was signing off on all these refusals to pay for medical services and uh, one guy who, who died as a consequence of this, apparently, um, uh, his family is suing, and it uh, turns out that uh, the doctor wasn't even signing the forms. What the hell's going on here? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing that, that there is litigation. You can find out things under oath that uh, these insurance companies would never own up to. Uh, and it's not probably not unusual in the insurance business for a medical director to allow others to sign off on uh, the denial of coverage for needed care. Uh, but they tell, they being the insurance companies, tell their customers, certainly their employer customers, that no one other than a medical doctor uh, can sign off on a denial of, uh, of, of care. Mm. Uh, that just, even if that is true, though, uh, it doesn't assure you that you'll be able to get the care that you need. But in this particular case, uh, that doctor, under oath, uh, admitted that uh, uh, many times, there would be a, a denial or request for coverage that would come uh, before his before his office, but he would have someone else handle it and put his name to it. Right, and he wasn't even reading the patient's records. They were they weren't exactly. they weren't people to him. They were uh, this was paperwork that could be signed in a, in exchange for a large paycheck, essentially. Exactly right. That's exactly what was happening. And these are uh, these people are very well paid. And I said. Uh, often in the interviews that I've done about my days at Cigna, and in particular about one case that, that was kind of the final straw for me in which a medical director at Cigna had denied, uh, a, had said he would not approve a request for coverage of a liver transplant of a 17-year-old girl in California. Mm. And uh, he was 2,500 miles away and had never obviously laid eyes on Madeline Sarkeesian. But he just felt that based on some papers that he had seen, uh, he didn't think it was medically appropriate. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Natalie died a few days later. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and that, that pushed you over the top. Um, I, it, that was what pushed me over the top. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't in good conscience uh, keep doing the job that I was doing. I, I, I understand that uh, Stephen J. Hemsley, the CEO of United Healthcare, has taken over a billion dollars in compensation from that company in uh, both cash and stock, and that there's over a hundred executives there who are being paid more than a million dollars each. Um, uh, are those do those numbers comport with reality? And if so, where's all this money coming from that these guys are paying themselves? It comes out of your pocket and mine if you have uh, private insurance, and many, most of us do, at least uh, those of us who are younger than 64. And that's exactly what is going on. Uh, one of the days I, I dreaded most, Tom, when I was in the industry was handling calls from reporters when we announced uh, executive compensation. You have to do that. At least you have to disclose the five most highly compensated 
uh, employees of your company, if you're publicly traded, uh, to the SEC and filing so that your shareholders can know about it. But it doesn't surprise me a bit that there are 100 at United and maybe some of these other com uh, companies. And it's not just the executives you probably have heard about and know about. And the, the ones that are uh, that, have, that are in the C-suite, like the chief financial officer or the chief uh, uh, medical officer or uh, technology officer, often people who are in sales and marketing at these companies are among the most highly compensated employees in an insurance company. Yeah, I know that for a fact. Because they're making it happen. They're out there. I mean, they're, they're, they're bringing happen. the money in. Yeah, right. I get that. And then, and then the other people just keep the money by way of denying denying coverage to people. Um, I, I, I saw an article a couple of days ago that, and then, and then immediately the next day I saw an ad on TV um, that I think was for United Healthcare. Uh, but the, the story was that Medicare Advantage, which is privatized Medicare, um, right. and the, the Medicare Advantage now is able to not only offer dental and vision, which is not part of normal Medicare, Medicare but also will support now in-home services, you know, having somebody come in and install a, a, a bar in your, in your bathtub so that you can get in and out of the bathtub without falling, uh, having a home health care nurse uh, provide long-term treatment uh, in, in homes. Uh, it seems like a great thing. I mean, these, these should be part of regular Medicare. Um, right. How do the insurance companies offer more than Medicare does for uh, basically, you know, a, a, a roughly the same price? I mean, this is this is how this is a very large part of the profits of United Healthcare and right. uh, and at the AARP. Uh, is right. it that the government is? Are we are we double paying? If I you know if somebody mm -hmm. has Medicare Advantage, they're paying a premium to the health insurance company, and they're getting benefits from the health insurance company. But is Medicare also compensating the health insurance company? No, absolutely. Um, in fact, it's been shown many times over the years that the federal government through the Medicare program, uh, because the Medicare Advantage program exists, that it is overpaying these private insurance companies a lot of money uh, to participate in this program. It started largely uh, during the Bush administration, the George W. Bush administration, uh, as one of the, the efforts of trying to privatize uh, the Medicare program. And over time, it's largely been working because you've got about a third of Medicare enrollees now enrolled in these kinds of plans. Uh, the companies advertise, I mentioned earlier, marketing, uh, but they spend it's enormous sums of money trying to get seniors uh, who are Medicare eligible to sign up for their Medicare Advantage plans. I've been every if you're if you're uh, older, if you're Medicare eligible, undoubtedly you're getting a lot of uh, pieces in the mail from insurance companies, and you're seeing it on TV, and that's what's happening. They they are they have become cash cows because of these overpayments and because of other things that these companies are doing that they don't tell you about. Um, for one thing, a lot of these these health plans have what's referred to as narrow or skinny networks, and oftentimes. Uh, you might go to a doctor and your doctor is not in that network. You don't know about it. Or you might get sick when you're traveling and you won't get any coverage because you're in one of these plans. So there are some really big downsides uh, to these plans, but you don't see that in your advertising material. Right. So, so if you have a Medicare Advantage program and you actually get sick, you might end up getting really badly screwed by the insurance company because Medicare exactly. Advantage is not Medicare. It's private health insurance that, that uh, uh, yeah. That's yeah, that. Absolutely. And in fact, there's, a, there's been a trend for some time for people who uh, are in Medicare Advantage plans when they get really, really sick, and especially toward the end of their lives, the care is just being, uh, not, they're not, not getting access to the care that they need. So many of them switch back to traditional Medicare, which of course is what the, the Medicare Advantage companies like because they're no longer having to pay for the care uh, the right. traditional Medicare program is at that stage of their lives. Yeah. It's this is all just amazing stuff. Um, you're doing great work, Wendell, and and I hope Tarbell is going well. Tarbell's going well, and Tom, I just started the Potter Report, a podcast. So hope everyone will check out the Potter Report. Okay, cool. Check out uh, in your local podcast supplier, right? You know, iTunes right. and all that kind of stuff. Spotify, everybody. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, the Potter Report. You got it. And uh, WendellPotter.com and Tarbell.org. Uh, thanks so much, Wendell. Thank you, Tom. And and Wendell's books, Deadly Spin and Nation on the Take.